Welcome to Business as a Magical Practice, where your business is the vehicle for your self-integration and soul evolution. My name is Sam Garcia, and I'm the founder of Dirty Alchemy Digital Marketing. And I'll be guiding you through how you can use your business as a spiritual practice and what magical businesses are doing to hit their goals and change the world. Together, we'll be relating the mystical to the world of business so that our work can unite spirit and matter, shadow and light, conscious and unconscious. Let's dive in. Hi, everyone. You are in for a treat today. We are talking about embracing community for a radiant life and business. And it's a bit of a mishmash. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of research and studies that went into this podcast episode and really looking at how community and sisterhood impacts us at a biological level and how it ripples out into our businesses and our lives. You're also going to hear a bit later on a mishmash compilation of some lovely testimonials from the women from the last round of the alchemical business intensive on their specifically on their experience around community and being in the community and how that impacted their businesses and their lives. So stick around to the end of the episode for that. And Obviously, the Alchemical Business Intensive is open for application right now, so you can just head on over to thedirtyalchemy.com slash ABI. If you haven't put your application in yet, you can read all about all the things, the curriculum, the container, what you can expect being within it, and what kind of entrepreneurs you're going to be able to network with within it. So I look forward to reading yours. And... Yeah, I I can't wait to hear how this episode impacts you. Friendship among women is a complex topic. Within Western society, we see conflicting and highly charged messages that can make us question, am I doomed? Are women inherently meant to be at one another's throats? In the modern classic movie, Mean Girls, we see this eerie fear that's lurking in the back of many women's head. The fear that you just can't trust other women. You always have to have your guard up because when it falls, you will be struck. There's a great quote by Karen Handel. I'm a girl. That means I fight like a girl and there ain't nothing meaner. So the fate of female friendships is this conundrum as old as the birth of the human species, argued by evolutionary biologists, popping up in myths of ancient societies. It seems to be ingrained in our DNA to be competitive and catty with one another, but perhaps that is just half the story. While the biology of survival may be playing out in modern times, we're also seeing the slow shifts of this modern era towards more collaboration. And science is showing that your girl squad can actually boost your health and the overall perceived quality of life, but more on that later. So this podcast today will be an exploration on how toxic female friendships became the norm, how it's perpetuated and overcome today, and the solid changes that we can all make to encourage a healthy connection to feminine energies of all kinds. So let's jump in. First, by looking at the evolution into aggression and I had a, found a couple of great quotes, one by Vanna Bonta, gossip can be entertaining. Occasionally, I've heard the most fa- fascinating things about myself I never knew. And another by Erica Jong, gossip is the opiate of the oppressed. So the court of evolutionary biology is rich with story and speculation in regards to how women relate to one another. The prevailing perspective suggests that the women, the way that women relate with each other today is the result of the necessary habits that we needed to take up to simply survive as human beings in physically rigorous environments. So two key facts came into play in the distant past. The first is that women had to be picky and strategic in their mate selection because 
they could only physically birth a baby every year or two. And the number of children they could have in total, total was highly dependent on the resources provided by their mate and their community. And the second is that we lived within tight-knit tribes in which the people you saw every day could make or break you in a very real way in terms of personal survival and the survival of your children. So when we hear the word competition, many of us think of physical fighting, like a battle to the death, but this simply was not possible among women. We have a precious and revered resource for our tribe, the ability to birth new life. So instead of direct aggression, often observed in men, women developed the tendency towards indirect aggression. As Tracy Valancourt puts it in her 2013 literature review, we meld two tendencies, that of self-promotion, in which we consistently make ourselves look better, and that of derogation of rivals, in which we're tearing down the perceived character of other women, which in turn makes us look better. This not only plays out in the scene of Mean Girls, in which a few very attractive women, very much attached to their looks, claw at each other for queen bee status and consistently dismantling the confidence of any woman who comes near. But we also see it in the quote unquote feminist women who quote unquote pity those women who are vying for men's attention, indirectly shaming women for caring about how they look. Can you see how this is also derogation of rivals? <laughs> and this kind of competition can be fierce. Does anyone else remember middle school? <laughs> In a Florida State study, women's testosterone levels went up when they were unknowingly smell when they unknowingly smelled shirts of young ovulating women, which the researchers presume as preparation for aggressive competition. Yeah. <laughs> so through social exclusion and talking behind someone's back, women did not endanger their bodies, that is their wombs, but they could also still work through conflicts. The issue here, of course, is that this is actually a more powerful weapon against women who so desperately relied on the tribe to survive. As a result, women became highly sensitive to any possible slights the lives of our children's and children and ourselves were at stake. The interesting perspective coming from feminist psychology is to point the blame not on women, but on the losing game of giving our power away to men. As known Spencer writes in Psychology Today, as women come to consider being prized by men, their ultimate source of strength, worth, achievement, and identity, they are compelled to battle other women for the prize. And as Emily Gordon summarizes in the New York Times, when our value is tied to the people who can impregnate us, we turn on each other. This somewhat opposes the evolutionary biology perspective, which claims that woman's sexuality is monitored by the men of, the tri of their tribe, particularly their father or husband, in order to ensure that a woman doesn't fool around with other men, resulting in a man having to raise another man's child, container of genetic information to be passed on to the next generation, being the children, the, ch the child is that container of genetic information. Instead, the feminist psychology perspective is that women are the monitor of other women's sexual availability. Because if sex is a resource, then more sexually promiscuous women lower the price of it. As a result, we are significantly more attuned to the nuance of social interaction. Studies show that compared to men, women tend to be more sensitive to emotional information and are better at decoding subtly encoded social and interpersonal messages. In addition, women's sense of self-worth is based more on their friends' opinions of them. This combination of acute awareness of and sensitivity to subtle social cues renders women more vulnerable to indirect interpersonal aggression. 
But the thing is, we are no longer dependent on the, the bonds of tribal society, localized tribal society. And for many of us, our sexuality is no longer a literal life or death topic. And if someone at our workplace doesn't like us for whatever reason, we're not going to be shunned from society. <laughs> our biology guided us out of the primordial soup, but our consciousness and intellect is the mechanism for stepping past our ancestral shadows. So let us look at those shadows. While the evolutionary biology and feminist psychology perspectives outlined earlier points to women being compelled to getting a leg up by any means necessary to make sure we have quote unquote access to the best genetic material, you may be compelled to ask, why is this still happening today when we aren't living in a space of survival or even in tribal settings? Well, the success rate of our womb nowadays seems more dependent on how well we can Netflix and chill, right? <laughs> While the basis is archaic, our relationships with other women do have biology at play, deep-seated in our DNA, that we can pretend doesn't exist or we can bring into light of our consciousness to look at and choose to continue the pattern or let it go. That is the alchemy of awareness, isn't it? So from one study, we, we look at Canadian researchers, Tracy Valancourt and Anshul Sharma. Uh, it showed how women judge and condemn each other based on appearance. They arrange for female participants to interact with a young research assistant. Some of the participants saw the assistant dressed in revealing clothes, while others saw her wearing jeans and a t-shirt. The researcher tracked participants' responses to the assistant during the meeting and after she left the room. The results were that the assistant was unanimously criticized when she wore revealing clothes and largely ignored when she wore regular attire. This study and others supports the evolutionary prediction, a more attractive woman, that is one who has more of what men like, will receive more hostility and less cooperation from other women because her presence threatens their own access to the evolutionary prize. And researcher Christopher Ferguson of Stetson University in Florida and his colleagues asked participants to watch two television programs with a svelte and chubby female star and interact with a woman in attractive or casual attire. And they found that participants' mood and self-image were not affected by the TV shows, but significantly affected by the, li the live encounters. Interacting with an attractive woman dressed in flattering clothing led to the participants to feel distressed and negative about their bodies, especially if the encounters were held in the presence of an attractive man. So we clearly have some stuff to work through, <laughs> especially for those of us that crave fulfilling relationships with other women. So there have been so many studies on meditation and different spiritual practices and different habits that we can cultivate within ourselves that impact our DNA and impact our cellular energy levels, heal healing of physical elements and psychological disorders, and also genetic transformation. So DNA is as essential a molecule is the essential molecule found in all human cells, which controls the body's growth, structure, and metabolism and immune functions. It carries the genetic information passed on from generation to generation. And human beings have about 25,000 genes of which only 5% are actively expressed and functional. Differential gene expression studies conducted on meditators uh, before and after the program registered the spontaneous expression of new genes, a phenomenon that is impossible to reproduce through any other known means that this study found. So we have so many ways that we can access and activate 
different parts of ourselves, including ones that have been turned off through our um, evolution. So clearly we can evolve past our biology, not only through consistent conscious choice, but also through transforming the subconscious mind and even genetic expression. And many of us have a deep yearning sometimes paradoxically paired with fear <laughs> for women friends. We can look back to the times in our youth in which our bosom buddies were our everything. All we wanted was more time together to play and giggle and share secrets with. And it seems as though as we grew up and as we had wounding encounters with other women, many of us transferred this beautiful interaction from our girlfriends to our boyfriend, or our partner, or our spouse. Requiring our significant other to fulfill all of our needs, playing the role of lover, best friend, father, mother, handyman, confidant. But just as there is biological implications that encourage women to compete with one another, there's also scientific evidence for the benefit of building our squad. An interesting thing happens when women get stressed. It's actually different than men. In times of stress, stress, both sexes release the hormones cortisol and epinephrine. But women also release a substantial amount of oxytocin. With men, only trace amounts of oxytocin is released. We all know oxytocin. You've heard me talk about it on this podcast. <laughs> it's one of the feel-good chemicals in our body, which in this situation gives a sense of calm, reducing fear. So while men are tumbled into the classic fight-flight-freeze response, women are more likely to turn to community. When life becomes challenging, women seek out friendships with other women as a means of regulating stress. A common female response, stress response, is to tend and befriend. That is when women become stressed, their inclination is to nurture those around them and reach out to others. This biology helps women to protect their children in stressful times and also to connect with other women. Being soaked alone is cold. Being soaked with your best friend is an adventure. That's from Emily Wing Smith. So good. <laughs> so we are hardwired for friendship because it works for us. When women diagnosed with breast cancer have a supportive group of friends, their survival rate skyrockets. When women lost their spouse, one of life's greatest stressors, being able to share the burden with close friends tend to fare better. And these are both scientifically proven. It even helps us with aging. <laughs> the more friends women have, the less likely they are to develop physical impairments as they age and the more likely they are to lead a contented life. Not too bad a deal, right? Have friends equals age well and be happy. <laughs> so let's look at healing toxic female friendships by connecting to higher feminine energies. With the way the earth is being treated in modern times, it is no wonder that many women have toxic female relationships in their lives. We know the doom and gloom, ice caps melting, topsoil eroding, plastic in our oceans, hundreds of species becoming extinct each day, and it all feels too big and overwhelming to do anything about it. But as our relationship with our own bodies and our own feminine nature relates to our female friendship, it also relates to the relationship we have with Mother Earth. And Thomas Berry writes, woman and earth are inseparable. The fate of one is the fate of the other. This association is given in such a variety of cultural developments throughout the world in differing historical periods that it is hardly possible to disassociate the two. As individuals, we can all use more nature time. <laughs> the research pointing to time outside bringing greater physical, mental, and emotional health, more happiness, less stress, is more and more each week. 
And this relationship is absolutely reciprocal, just as our friends love the time that we spend together to be seen, to be heard. So it's true with our relationship with the earth. This grander mirror of our relationship with other women, ourselves, our own bodies, is seen in that of the planet we reside on. And the natural disasters that we are seeing on the rise may simply be the earth screaming to be heard. While there will need to be reforms in our government, businesses, and communities in order to fully address her cries, Simpler acts in our everyday lives do compound and reflect in the needed global shift in consciousness. So spending time outside, expressing gratitude to the beauty of our planetary home, praising her, singing songs and making art for her, just like a friend and like a lover, acknowledgement and presence can transform our relationship. And I just wanted, I have a, I have a very long quote that I just, I can't help but, but read. It's from Jean Shinoda Bolin from Urgent Message from Mother, Gather the Women, Save the World, that I feel like is just so appropriate for this episode. And it goes, you may be carrying the seeds of something that will change your life in the world. Take that seed and bring it into a circle of women. Nurture it with wisdom, give it energy, prune what needs pruning. Let the taproot go down into the energy field of Mother Earth to draw from and contribute thought and action into the morphic field, and then take it out into the world to bloom and bear fruit. Every single thing in nature belongs to its particular group with which it shares similarities and yet is unique with no two of anything alike. Yet each comes into bloom or fruition with the others in season. Some species can stay dormant for long stretches of time, waiting for just the right conditions. And then all at once, seeds unconnected to each other directly begin to send tendrils up to the surface. To the unobservant, when they do bloom, it is as if they, are appear they appeared overnight. I think it is analogous to what is happening now. Attention goes to where the action is, on wars and conflicts, on centers of power, on scandals and celebrities. Unnoticed and still very close to the ground, a message is rising into consciousness. It is growing more in some places than others. Invisibly linked, like communication on the internet, or like bilocality noted in physics, where related particles separated by vast distances move together, or like wellsprings drawing from the same aquifer, women are getting the message. Gather the women, save the world. So that was from Urgent Message from Mother, Gather the Women, Save the World by Jean Shinoda Bolin and M.D. So, Maybe you have experienced this too. Feeling envy and competitiveness with other women, feeling jealousy and possessiveness of your partner, especially around other women. And the sisterhood wound is real and it is a part of our biology or at least our evolution. Ultimately, this is a reflection on our own self-trust, our own self-love how much we fill our own selves up versus seeking validation and safety from outside sources. And obviously there are people that are in their own trauma and drama that you may need to not have in your life because they will drain you. But I have found again and again that once you set your standard of how you treat yourself, how you expect other people to treat you and how easily you will walk away from situations that you are unwilling to fuck with, the less you find yourself even coming into contact with people who are jealous of you and who want to tear you down or compete with you. When you move in the world from a deep knowing that you have enough and that you want the best for people, there is so much more grace in life and you will find that people react to you differently. And 
as we talked about, men have better examples of healthy competition where women tend to lean into the toxic competition direction. direction. But women are also more wired for community. So our potential is limitless when we come together. And you have undoubtedly experienced this. When someone you love hits a big goal and has a big win, you feel so much joy for them. And if that is our base point, our baseline, everything changes. This is wiring you for abundance. And it's also wiring you for a joyful life. I see this in clients too in regards to building a team. If they have a hard time with sisterhood or fellowship, they have a hard time allowing themselves to be supported. Imagine that. It's pretty obvious, right? If your baseline is competition, then you will not assume that the people you hire want the best for you. You will have more transactional relationships. It will be tit for tat instead of everyone rising together. Humans have evolved to be in community. Our brains are wired to care about what those around us think. So you do need to be very intentional with who you surround yourself with. You need to be very intentional with who you're witnessed by. Because every day in the media, we already hear about economic instability, how so many people are barely getting by. We see other business owners bragging about hustling and being busy and working nonstop, that we have to be prettier or quieter or nicer or whatever just to be loved. But imagine what can happen if you are forming deep connections with other women and other people who are building businesses that are highly profitable celebrating hit income goals, where you're encouraged to work less and only in your zone of genius while still making the same amount of money, if not significantly more. Where we know that our own internal work massively impacts our external reality and our businesses are a work of art. So that is why I launched the Alchemical Business Intensive at the beginning of 2021. People need it now. You need to be doing this work now. So it is time to meet your new support system. The women that will be in the emotional trenches with you over the next six months of focused action and change in your business and in yourself. I want to invite you into the Alchemical Business Intensive. We start in October. It's a very small group container. We already have a lot of applications in but I want to see yours. Come 2022, your business can be supporting you and you will be supported by us as well. So come on in, come be, meet your new business BFFs. You can just head on over to the dirtyalchemy.com slash ABI to apply now. Yeah, it's a good reminder. And I, I think I'm, I'm like, I've been shedding a lot of, um, like relationships in my life that have been playing out that old pattern of and and like calling in powerful women who are doing amazing things in the world who want to lift each other up and support each other that was a big part of joining abi was because i, I wanted to be surrounded by women like all of you who are who are here to support each other and not get like threatened or um project insecurities around women in their power so I appreciate this space so much. It's been really healing and working with Venus during this time has been really healing. And I feel like I've just been like shedding a lot of those toxic relationships and having really beautiful new ones come through. So it's been awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm really appreciating this container as well. I feel like so held in like this kind of like taking off stage of my business, you know, of like, okay, here are the systems, here's like like the practical things is what I, I really need, like kind of the backbone, because I'm all ideas and like having that like stable, solid, rooted backbone of like, okay, this is the process. Okay, you're on this rung of the ladder. Here's the next rung. Okay. And then the one, there's the one after that. And this is the process, like just having a process that I can follow. It's like a map 
because like sometimes I'm like driving in circles I'm like where's the road where's the road you know oh my god it's all horizon like I could go there I could go here I could go there you know I don't know where to go um and I really do appreciate like knowing that this container that you made the container longer that like you know I to have this support is really invaluable and and also be in sisterhood with with these brilliant women who are all like masters on so many different levels. Just imagine, imagine having a group of people that you can rely on for inspiration, for guidance, for emotional support. Imagine having women you can DM and call up whenever you're having a rough day. As visionary CEOs, we can't really bring that shit to our teams. You really don't want to be integrating your own drama with the people you employ. This leads so many female entrepreneurs, I know, to feel so lonely. Because if we spend a lot of time with our team, but we can't actually discuss larger issues with them, it's lonely. Who are you going to talk to about it? And they can't go to their families or friends because they aren't entrepreneurs. They just don't get it. I remember when I started my business, even up to a couple of years ago, When I would dump on my husband about a shitty client or a scary conversation I had to have, he'd respond with, well, why don't you just quit and do something else? You don't need to do this business. (laughs) He didn't get it. He couldn't see what I was building. I mean, now he's insanely supportive. He finally sees the aftermath of the build. And most of our time, most of the time, your family and friends aren't entrepreneurs and they don't get it. They may not even know what the fuck it is you do on the internet. (laughs) And your team can't be that support system. They absolutely support you in your business and running and growing and thriving, but they are not your coach. (laughs) They often don't have the next level mindset you need to leap to your next goal. And it's often wildly appropriate and damaging to talk with them about your fears about your business's success. You instead need people to hold you in the drama and the celebrations and totally understand. They understand that you can double or quadruple your income in the next year. They may have done it themselves. You wanna be in that room. So can't wait to see your application. The alchemical business intensive is open now. We start in October, but the application window closes very soon. That is at read all about it, Submit your application at thedirtyalchemy.com slash ABI, and I'll see you here next week, and I'll see you in my inbox. I'm excited for all of you. I'm seeing all the transformations already happening, and I mean, Teresa quit her job. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Were you here for that, Maria? Maybe you were gone. Oh, oh she my God. And like has now booked two I just, like full on uh, yeah. package clients. And Ooh. I am in. I am loving. Thank you. I am loving projector mode. Yes. It, it, it really, it really wasn't going to happen after, you know, being up at 4 30 in the morning to drive an hour to be there at 6 30 to clean teeth all day to have a half an hour lunch to come back at 3.15, be home at 4.30, 12 hours of my day was given to somebody else. And I I had nothing left. I kept saying, sure, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then I was just like, no, no. And so I gave him a week's notice and I said, bye. (laughs) And it does, it feels good. And I've got these two clients now and I've got more, you know, more coming and so it's been a good thing. Yeah. And I wouldn't have done it if I hadn't been in ABI. And I think the shift for me, I think it was, I didn't tell anybody I had done this. I just told you guys. And that's all I needed. I had to be really careful about who I gave that information to because I did not need somebody else's fears causing concern to me, which is pretty much how it's always been, you know? So, um, yeah, so there's just, my mom doesn't know, my sister doesn't know. And not because I'm like, feel like I'm doing something wrong. It's just, it won't be, it won't be accepted. 
it'll be, what are you going to do? What happens if, but you had a great job, but you were, they don't get it. They're, I'm the crazy spiritual black sheep of the family, so they're not going to get it. I think the other thing that I didn't anticipate that I got from the alchemical business intensive is sisterhood. And I think that it's so easy in entrepreneurship to have, like, it can be quite lonely. And even for me in the online space, I'm very, um, I'm very well connected in the mindset space. But what I really enjoyed coming into ABI for was meeting women from so many different facets um, and industries, like being able to meet with an energy healer and like swapping sessions. Or we had this amazing interior designer that was in our round um, that is giving me some consultations on switching my office around. And I was able to provide her some business coaching. Um, just the other day on a call in ABI, there was a, a member who was asking about making big price jumps. And I was able to like give her feedback on like, Hey, like, here's how I 10 X my rate in the last year. And then in the next breath, she was able to help me with like, here's some things around planetary magic. And this is like, these are some of the practices I use. And it's such a beautiful space when you can come together in that room that not only binds together business, but is also spirituality in like a very cohesive container. It's not one without the other. And I just love that, like in one breath, it was, let's talk about like, you know, doubling or tripling my rate. And then the next breath, it was like, please tell me about how you leverage planetary magic. And also feeling more a part of a business community. I think that was a really big improvement too. Um, before I felt quite isolated in what I, what I was doing. And now with the women in the intensive, I feel really held in this space that allows me to grow as a business person. How did you feel about the community aspect of the alchemical business intensive? Oh, it's so good. And it was super interesting because I remember the first call that we had and I felt like the baby of the group because um, there were other people who were so much um, further along in their business. Um, and then as, you know, the last six months has unfolded, it's just been so beautiful to watch how like I formed connections with pretty much everyone. And it just sort of yeah, kind of unfolded all in its own time without any pushing or like, hey, let's be friends, you know? Um, and I just, I feel like I've just had access to so much expertise and I'm not just talking about yours, but talking about all the amazing gifts that all the other people bring in as well. So yeah, that was, I mean, that was like massive value added bonus. <laughs> And another one that actually kind of caught me off guard that I didn't think I was necessarily looking for was, was the like camaraderie and sisterhood. My intensive happened to be all women. I don't know what the next intensive will be. I didn't think that mattered so much. Um, I mean, I know that sisterhood matters. I didn't, I didn't think that this program would be a place that gave me that nutrient, but it's actually in, in some of those sister, like just trade calls or like, oh, let's hop on a 15 minute call and I can help you with something. Some of those calls moved huge things in my life. Like one moved a big mindset thing from, from a woman who in my program, who's a mindset coach. Another one uh, does something called spatial alchemy. And she, she helped me redo my entire office, which drastically changed a lot of things in my business. Okay, everyone, thanks for staying on to the end of the episode. You made it. And I can't wait to hear how you're going to actually start implementing community and sisterhood within your own life, within your business. And tell me on Instagram if there's any blocks that you are facing right now around this. I would love to hear. And I know for myself, I have gained so much from being supported in my business. I didn't hire a coach until the end of or middle of 2019. I didn't join my first mastermind until 2020. And 
or maybe it was 2019. No, I think it was 2020, <laughs> beginning of 2020. And it really had a massive impact on my own life, on my business, just being able to have a resource to be able to rely on when I didn't know how to respond to a client or a potential client or just having this, I mean, the whole idea behind a mastermind is this conglomeration of minds and brilliance. And so if I have a, a client who is an e-commerce business, and that's honestly not my specialty, my specialty is around online trainings. I mean, it's moving towards e-commerce now because we're working with a lot more people in e-commerce, but actually being able to resource the minds of people where that is their expertise has been invaluable for me and just seeing it within the alchemical business intensive and that being such an unexpected resource for people who join they were not joining for the community but it ended up being one of the top facets for them so see you soon talk to you soon definitely see you next week next thursday for our next episode we will have a lovely guest i can't wait for you to meet her and see you then Thank you.